We've heard so many times, people are inherently terrible drivers. Is that truth or is that a myth? Well, in here, it's kind of a misleading statement. The situation is complicated, but let's break that down. Definitely a myth is the statement that 94% of crashes are due to human error. The industry repeatedly says that, and it's a gross exaggeration and misrepresentation of the underlying data. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration used to even say that until they were called out on it. They have a publication saying 94% of serious crashes are due to human error. That's not really what's going on. If you look at the underlying data, also published by NHTSA, what it says is humans failed to prevent some crashes that's different than causing the crashes. Let's look at the exact wording of the study from NHTSA that this is all based on. What it says is the critical reason was assigned to drivers in 94% of the time. And well, what's critical reason? Critical reason is the last thing that happened. So this is saying 94% of the time, maybe the human driver could have prevented a crash. It's not quite the same as saying they caused it. But if you look at the very next sentence in the same paragraph in that publication, we're talking about the very next sentence. What does it say? It says, in none of these cases was the assignment intended to blame the driver for causing the crash. So the underlying study from NHTSA says, no, no, they're not causing the crashes. It's just an involvement in human error. What's really going on is there are lots of possible contributions to crashes. And lots of times there's a bad situation where the human driver might possibly avoid a crash, not cause it, but might avoid it. And if they're not perfect in f failing to avoid it, then they are, are blamed in part for the crash. And that's what the 94% is about. Mind you, no credit is given to the many, many, many times where human drivers see something wrong and do the right thing to avoid the crash. So this statistic says that yes, human driver skill plays a role in crashes, but it's not at all the same with the implication that, well, because human drivers are terrible, we should get rid of the human driver. That's just not so. But don't take it from me. Take it from the chair of the National Transportation Safety Board who said, it ain't 94%. The idea is that if you want to improve safety, blaming human drivers for being bad doesn't get you to better safety because there's so many different contributions beyond just human drivers being imperfect as humans are. The industry, nonetheless, has pushed on this and pushed on this to say, oh, humans are terrible drivers. 42,795 Americans were killed, implied because human drivers made mistakes. That's very far from what really happens. And human drivers drive drunk and they just drive distracted and drowsy. And those are all true, but it's not 43,000 fatalities worth solely attributed to those causes. Therefore, you should use our robot drivers instead. The implication is that we got rid of the humans and did the robots, we'd save 43,000 lives a year. The reality is far from that. One thing that position ignores is that human drivers can actually improve. So let's look at the data. People love to show the last 10 years of data, which show things flat and then a little bit at worse with the COVID-19 pandemic. But if you zoom out and look back to 1985, in fact, cars have been getting safer just with human drivers. The fatality rate has gone down to 60% of what it used to be. The injury rate per mile has gone down to 47% of what it used to be. And the fatality per population has gone down to 67% of what it used to be. Now, I'd love to see these numbers better, but saying there's nothing you can do except call in the robots because humans are impossible to improve is just not true. Here's the data showing that a combination of driver behavior changes and better technology has in fact reduced road fatalities. Would we like to be better? Absolutely. But you can't say there's nothing we can do except call in the robots. In fact, if you want to improve safety, there's a lot of different things you have to work on, and it's more than just those allegedly terrible human drivers. The next obvious question is, okay, we improved, but we'd like to improve a lot more. Could we have done better? The answer is, yeah, we could have, but, but let's look at some numbers to back that up. In 1985, alcohol played a role in 41% of fatalities. That's a serious problem that needed to be addressed. And in 1985, the fatality rate was 2.5 fatalities per 100 million vehicle miles traveled, which is a pretty high number. So how did that change? 
Well, by 2019, alcohol-related fatalities had gone down to 28%. Still a high number, but a marked improvement. Things are getting better there. And the fatality rate had cut to less than half at 1.11 per 100 million vehicle miles. And the COVID-19 pandemic by 2021 had shot back up. But we know that human drivers are capable of 1.11 because that's what we saw in 2019. We can say, okay, we've gotten better. This is essentially a different way of looking at the data from the previous graph. But let's ask, gee, how do other countries do? Well, let's take the United Kingdom as a comparison country. In the United Kingdom in 1985, they had just finished a drink driving improvement program. And by 1985, they had only 18% of their fatalities due to alcohol. And their fatality rate was worse than the U.S. at 2.67 per 100 million vehicle miles. Okay, well, how did they change in 2019? 2019, their drink driving rate was down to 13%, so a nice improvement, but they were already better than the U.S. to begin with, and they still stayed at least twice as good as the U.S. for that. How about the fatality rates? The fatalities rates went down by a factor of 5 to 0.51, much, much better than the U.S., so they're at least twice as good as the U.S. for fatalities. So the two takeaways. One is that it isn't all drunk driving. The second is you can do a whole lot better than the U.S. has been doing. And it's not due to robot drivers because they weren't deployed in 2019 in enough numbers to make any difference at all. We can see the U.K. is one of the better countries, although Scandinavian countries do even better. Uh, But there are a whole bunch of countries that are better than the U.S. In fact, the U.S. is objectively terrible in terms of fatalities per vehicle kilometers. So discussion saying, well, human driver is terrible, there's nothing you can do, is false because there's plenty you can do and there's all these countries doing it. And it isn't just Europe. Australia is down there. Canada is down there. The United States is really lagging behind on highway safety. And it can't be attributed solely to humans being terrible drivers because there are human drivers in the other countries as well. The takeaway for this section is that better road safety does not require using computer drivers you can do much better with human drivers by looking past blaming the human and looking at other factors that contribute to road safety.